Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Reserved Investments. I want to warn you, this is going to be a controversial video for some of you. I want to give my opinion on the abundance of remasters and remakes that are pretty much clogging up the modern era world of video games at present time, mainly at the hands of companies like Sony and Nintendo, who are just doing this for an easy cash grab. Now, to be fair, to be fair here, there are reasons for remastering specific games. Let me give you an example. I applaud Nintendo for bringing out Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, onto the Nintendo Switch. That game was released originally more than 20 years ago and was only available for the Nintendo GameCube. So it makes sense to dust that game off, remaster it, and release it for a new generation of fans. But unfortunately, what is happening now is companies like Nintendo and Sony are remastering games that really don't need to be remastered. Case in point, I tuned in to the June 18th Nintendo Direct presentation. And overall, I was pleased and also disappointed in some of the video game offerings that Nintendo is releasing over the next 6 to 12 months. Specifically, Nintendo announced that they are going to be doing a remaster of Donkey Kong Country Returns. Now, this is a prime example of what I'm talking about. Donkey Kong Country Returns first premiered on the Nintendo Wii and simultaneously appeared on the Nintendo 3DS handheld system back in November of 2010. There are already two different versions of that game that are easy to buy on eBay. If you have a Nintendo Wii, if you have a Nintendo Wii U, if you have a Nintendo 3DS, you can already play those games and you can buy them for less than $20. What's Nintendo doing? They're remastering that game and they're going to release it in January 2025 for the Nintendo Switch system and it's going to set you back $59.99 plus tax if you happen to live in the United States. Now, in my opinion, that's an example of a game that did not need a re-release. There is absolutely no point in re-releasing that game a third time, especially within 15 years, especially given the fact that the game is not relatively expensive on the secondary market. Now, Nintendo also has a habit of neglecting other franchises and games that do deserve remasters. How many times has the rumor mill promised us that a new F-Zero GX remaster was coming for the Nintendo Switch systems soon? It turns out Nintendo has abandoned that franchise. And this is why I want to do this video. Because believe it or not, this ties directly into what I teach on this channel, Collectibles Finance. If we're going to oversaturate the market with remaster and remake after remaster and remake, it's going to actually affect the value of the previous games that were released originally that may be scarce to find in the wild. Case in point. Who's going to pay a premium now for the GameCube version of Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, when you can simply go to any store and buy it for $59.99 and play it on the Nintendo Switch? And we all know when the Nintendo Switch 2 or the Nintendo Switch successor comes out, it's going to be backwards compatible. This is going to start to create chaos in the collecting video game marketplace. It already has. One of the great surprises that was in the Nintendo Direct that premiered on June 18th was Capcom announcing that they're going to be putting out in physical form for both the PlayStation and Nintendo consoles, Marvel Capcom Fighting Collection. Now, this is great. It's a day one purchase for me. I'm really looking forward to this. But you got to remember, there's people out there that have those original games, and they're going to be upset because it is going to potentially affect the value of those original releases. And this is something that isn't talked about enough on YouTube. I know I'm looking at this from an investing, from a speculating standpoint, and already I know I'm gonna get cut up in the comment section because a lot of the people that are gonna find this video, they're not understanding that Reserved Investments, my channel, deals with collectible finance. That's why we have to talk about these talking points in depth. But make no mistake, 
For those of you that keep pushing the buttons, making sure that Nintendo needs to be made aware that we need another remaster of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker or The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. May I remind you, Twilight Princess was originally released for both the GameCube and was a launch title for the Nintendo Wii. It then got a remaster on the Wii U. Do we really need a Nintendo Switch version of that game as well? The market is getting murky here. And what's amazing to me is the amount of fanboys that will buy anything that Nintendo puts out. And in most cases, thanks to the popularity of speculating and hoarding mass-produced modern era video games, a lot of these crazy fanboys, they're buying multiple copies. I guarantee you, there is somebody out there who already owns an opened and factory sealed copy of Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Nintendo Wii and the Nintendo 3DS. In January of 2025, they're also going to own two copies of the remake for the Nintendo Switch, one to open and one to play. A lot of these companies are making a fortune off of your stupidity. And this is affecting the trajectory of these collecting categories going forward. Make no mistake. One of the things that I'm very upset with Nintendo specifically about is the fact that they've abandoned a lot of their core franchises simply because some of those franchises don't hit the sales numbers of, say, a new Zelda game, a new Mario game, or a new Metroid game. Case in point, where are the Switch entries to the Kid Icarus series? Pilot Wings, F-Zero, Star Fox, or even Punch-Out. I would kill for a remaster version of Star Fox Zero for the Nintendo Switch, assuming, assuming they correct the faulty control scheme that almost made the Wii U version of that game unplayable. I understand that the Wii U version didn't sell all that well. It was in the bargain bin pretty quickly after its initial release. But the Wii U didn't sell all that well either. So we're really comparing apples and oranges here. If Nintendo really wants to put out all of these remasters and remakes, they need to do so intelligently. They should do a remaster of F-Zero GX. If they're claiming that that's the best game in the series, they don't think they can top it, then simply remaster it. Go look on eBay what that game goes for at present time. Instead of giving us Donkey Kong Country Returns, which nobody really asked for, give us something like a Kid Icarus Uprising release, a new F-Zero or a remaster of GX, or even, I'll even take a new entry into the Pilot Wings or Punch-Out series at present time. It is insane that a lot of these companies, you can tell they're just doing this as a cash grab. Another case in point, perfect example, Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon. Luigi's a Mansion 2 first premiered on the Nintendo 3DS handheld system with a suggested retail price, if you happen to live in the United States, of $39.99 plus tax. What does Nintendo do? They announced the Nintendo Switch. We got Luigi's Mansion 3. Great game. Great entry in the series. No complaints there. But then they announced, we're going to remaster Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon. Why do we all of a sudden need a remaster for that game? Could it be? Because Nintendo knows it's a little effort to remaster that game onto the Nintendo Switch and they can charge you $59.99 again plus tax for that same game and they know the fanboys will buy it and most likely they'll buy more than one copy because everybody's collecting and speculating this stuff thinking it's all going to go to the moon. This is why I caution you guys to be very careful if you're playing in this market. I honestly recommend that if people are speculating in modern era video games, they do so over the short term. Look at Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I'm here to tell you at some point, that game is probably going to get re-released. It'll most likely get re-released when Nintendo introduces the Nintendo Selects line for the Nintendo Switch. But I assure you, if you have that game and you paid $39.99 or even $59.99 for it, and you have it sitting on your shelf, and you can make money on it, you might as well sell it in the market. Sell it into the hype, collect your profit, and go after something else. 
a lot of these games are no longer worth hoarding. Now that I spent some time talking about Nintendo, we also have to talk about Sony. Because Sony is really, really milking the remaster machine. I mean, let's be realistic. You could forgive Sony for bringing The Last of Us to the PlayStation 4 console. Because let's be realistic. The PlayStation 3 was the least popular PlayStation system that Sony ever put out. A lot of people didn't even buy into the PlayStation 3 platform because if you guys remember when it was released, it had a suggested retail price of $599. People were more interested in the Nintendo Wii system and also the Xbox 360 was really making headway at that particular point in time and it was cheaper than the PlayStation 3. So a lot of people missed a lot of the awesome games that premiered solely on the PlayStation 3 platform. So when the PlayStation 4 was announced, Sony rectified a lot of their early mistakes with the PlayStation 3. People started buying the PlayStation 4. I fully understand why The Last of Us was remastered for the PlayStation 4. Because the PlayStation 3 was not compatible with the PlayStation 4. It's not like the PlayStation 5 that plays all PlayStation 4 games at present time. So I fully agree with Sony's decision. The problem is, Sony then created the PlayStation 5, and now they decided to remaster everything. They're not even giving us new games. They've remastered The Last of Us. They've remastered The Last of Us Part 2, which literally just came out a few years ago on the PlayStation 4 platform. It did not need a remaster. And now they announced an Until Dawn remaster. A lot of us that are fans of Until Dawn want a sequel or a new game in the series. We don't need to pay... $59.99 plus tax for a remaster of the original Intel Dawn that anybody can find still in Target or Walmart or GameStop or even on Amazon for less than 20 bucks, brand new and factory sealed. Just that it's the PlayStation 4 version. Does it really matter? The PlayStation 5 is not that much of a quantum leap over the PlayStation 4 where we have to have all these remasters and remakes. Now, again, there are exceptions here. I am looking forward to the remaster or the remake, whatever we're calling it, of Silent Hill 2. I honestly think that that is something that deserves a true remake and a true remaster because it's been many, many years since that game first premiered way back when the PlayStation 2 was a thing. But Sony 2 tends to abandon some of their lesser popular franchises. I don't know about you, but I would love a new game in the Resistance series. Resistance 1 and 2 were games that were only made available on the PlayStation 3. If you never bought a PlayStation 3, you never had a chance to experience those games. Same thing with Heavy Rain. I thought Heavy Rain was an incredible, incredible Sony PlayStation 3 exclusive. It was never brought, to my knowledge, to any other platform out there. That's a game that is dying a slow death that very few people ever had a chance to experience. So don't get me wrong, I'm not against remasters. I'm just saying, this is creating chaos in the market. And a lot of video game speculators, collectors, and investors do not realize how much this is going to affect the market going forward. Here, give you another example. Everybody who is into Japanese RPGs is probably a fan of the original Xenoblade Chronicles. When the original Xenoblade Chronicles first appeared on the Nintendo Wii system back in the day, it kind of flew under the radar. It was released towards the end of the console's lifespan, and a lot of people really didn't have a chance to experience it when it first came out. It also was in limited supply because Nintendo really didn't believe in the game or the franchise at that particular point in time. Well, lo and behold, the price started rising on the secondary market, there was a GameStop exclusive reprint to that game, which was justified back then, much like Metroid Prime Trilogy. Another great Nintendo Wii exclusive at that time that did deserve to be reprinted. But then as time went on, what did Nintendo do? Nintendo announced the new 3DS and they said, okay, we're going to create a version of Xenoblade Chronicles that can only run on the new Nintendo 3DS hardware. Now, in my opinion, that was a great decision by Nintendo 
Because if you didn't have a, ne a Nintendo Wii, if you never experienced that game, it obviously gave you a reason to buy the new Nintendo 3DS. Because that was the only platform where you could play that remastered version of that game. Well, lo and behold, the Nintendo Switch comes out. And what does Nintendo do? Nintendo remakes the original Xenoblade Chronicles again. Now, they could have easily ported Xenoblade Chronicles X, which was spectacular, that was only released for the Nintendo Wii U to the Nintendo Switch. They chose not to. Now we have three different versions of Xenoblade Chronicles and only one release of Xenoblade Chronicles X for a system that sold very poorly. As a result, if Nintendo ignores re-releasing that game, Xenoblade Chronicles X is going to continue to accelerate in value. So that's why I caution you guys. Just use caution here. Because now if Nintendo gets smart and they say let's re-release Xenoblade Chronicles X, the price of that game is going to pretty much collapse. Because very few people have Nintendo Wii U's. You really have to be a diehard Nintendo fan to have a Wii U. Just like if you're a Sony PlayStation hardcore fanboy, you probably have a PlayStation 3. A lot of people no longer have a PlayStation 3. There's people out there that have PlayStation 2s because, again, they're backwards compatible with the original PlayStation. There's people out there that have a lot of PlayStation 4s because, again, they're still readily available and they're cheap used. And, of course, there's people that have adopted the PlayStation 5 platform. But PlayStation 3 is one of those anomalies. Now, I do know when PlayStation 3 was first announced, a lot of the early systems are backwards compatible with PlayStation 2 and original PlayStation games. Those systems, though, command a premium on the secondary market, which means they're out of reach for the average casual gamer collector connoisseur that pretty much is in to a lot of these older games. So all is what I'm saying in this video is I'm okay with remasters. I'm okay with a lot of these remakes, but it has to be done intelligently. And it just seems that a lot of these companies are just doing it as a quick cash drop. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.